Mega Epic Tactical Helmet Brain Bucket? That's right. Mega Epic Tactical Helmets and or Brain Buckets. This episode's for all you gear whores out there and or helmet enthusiasts. Enjoy. Alright, first up, in any helmet collection, you have to have the U.S. General Issue M1 Still Pot. Uh, this thing's been around since World War II, and I believe it got phased out around 1985 um, in one form or another. It started out, it had like a laminated wood kind of helmet liner. The later one type of plastic here. comes equipped with the leather sweatband. Get it nice and moldy. Make sure you keep that stink right there on your head real nice. Uh, has a string adjustable retention system. Keep that pot from uh, bouncing on the top of your head. Um, this is the ERDL camo pattern on the Engineer Research Development Laboratories. Now it looks very similar to the U.S. Woodland pattern that uh, came later in the mid 80s. The difference is from its predecessor is that the blotches are going to be a little bit smaller. You can always tell the ERDL the pattern's a little bit smaller, whereas the more modern Woodland U.S. pattern is going to be uh, particularly the black is going to be bigger and stand out more. You can always tell the ERDL is a little bit smaller. Gotta have the M1 still pot. Shave out of it. Get your hot water. Good to go. Gotta have the uh, elastic. I believe they did come out with the cat eyes for the. Did they come out with the cat eyes for the still pot? I'm not sure. It might have came out later with the uh, with the K pot. Um. Anyhow, really cool helmet. If you're a Vietnam fan or a World War II buff, gotta have the M1 still pot. One of my favorites. Never use it. It's too goddamn heavy. It's too goddamn hot. But awesome collector's piece. Six Marlboros in it. Maybe a toothbrush. Maybe some matches. Um, maybe some uh, mosquito repellent. All kinds of cool stuff to deck it out, make it look official. All right, guys. The PASGT or Personal Armor System Ground Troop Helmet. Or just K pot. Um, this is a replica one, plastic. Uh, a lot of people, you can find this at any airsoft shop or any surplus or military shop. Um, this became standard issue, the real one, became standard issue in 1985, replacing the old M1 still pot. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've worn this one a few times back in my early days, probably 10 years ago. And it looks like it saved me from a pretty good scuff right there, knocking my head around. So, good job, K pot. Um, Real basic, kind of similar. Uh, it's also got the nickname the Fritz because it's very similar to uh, German style helmets as it goes down and covers the ears. Where um, earlier model helmets were pretty much just bowls. Um, finding a real Kevlar K pod uh, can still be kind of pricey because they are in wide use with U.S. forces and other uh, military forces around the world. So for now, the replica is good. For stopping BBs or cracking your head on something. The K pot. Alright, here we got the uh, the Mitch 2000. Is that right? Yeah, this is the Mitch 2000. Uh, M I C H, Modular Integrated Communication Summit, or the ACH, the Army Combat Helmet that they adopted after they gave up the uh, K pot in the uh, early 2000s. We started phasing those out. Um, the same thing as the K pot, pretty much, uh, the older helmet. The only difference is that there's going to be, um, well, first of all, let me get the, let me get the K pot. All right. All right. K pot. Got the brim. Going around, kind of flares out, sun off, keeps the debris out of your eyes, uh, and the ear dips down lower. Alright, on the ACH, they cut away the brim, and they cut up some of that ear portion a little higher so you can get uh, communication devices, headsets, whatever you need, mic sets um, underneath your helmet, and it's not going to interfere too much. Also, they say that. Um, one of the advantages of it is you're not when you're, your your um, field of view is not going to be blocked by a brim or anything like that. 
there has been some drawbacks. There has been a few different reports um, from uh, injuries that could have been prevented if the K-pop was still in use, uh, particularly to the neck area, uh, the lower cranial area. Is that right? Um, but uh, regardless, this is the helmet in use. Now, I don't got a suspension system on this. It's in use for another helmet, but um, that's the Mitch 2000. Now, the series about the Mitch, this, the Mitch series, that made some other designs as well. Here is a Mitch 2001. And as you can see, the only difference is, is that they cut up a little higher around the earpiece. Um, to further assist in giving you that space you need for communication and, and mic setup and radio setups, whatever you need. Um, kind of cool. I like it. It's one of my personal favorites. You can't tell I got it all decked out. Um, you know, with the Velcro going on it. And there's no right way to do the Velcro. Let me talk about that real quick. And you'll see it on my, my Mitch, uh, 2000, my ACH as well. The, the Velcro, you know, you usually want about a patch size on either side. That's what you're going to see. Um, you might see a little on front. You might see a little on top for, um, you know, um, identification tabs, uh, infrared tabs, print, you know, IFF tabs. You might see a little on the back. Same thing. It's the same idea as like wearing cat eyes or whatever. You can stick your IFF tabs on there. Um, but there's no right way to do it. I've seen a lot of, a lot of people talking on different forums. Well, where's the Velcro girl? What's the Velcro do? What's the purpose of it? Here's the deal, and if you talk to anybody that knows what the hell they're talking about, they'll say the same thing. If you have the opportunity to personalize your gear and you're in the armed forces, you're going to use and do to your gear what works for you. I mean, obviously, what's the point of having an eye on top of the helmet? It looks kind of cool. I don't know. It gives you a lot of surface space to stick shit on. That's pretty cool, I guess. But in reality, you just put the Velcro, deck it out. You do what works for you and uh, what's going to assist you best, what's mission specific, things like that. So that is the modern Kevlar's. There's also a Mitch 2001, which totally cuts up around here and gets rid of this whole over ear piece. And it's very similar to a, to a bump helmet, to like a skateboard helmet, which I'm going to get into next. Um, pretty cool looking and again, totally uh, further assists you and having the communication rig, the radio rig, underneath your helmet without interfering, um, pushing it down on your ears or anything like that. So, that is the Kevlar. Oh, no, it's not. I forgot. Hold on. All right. I'm going to try to explain this one the best I can. Uh, a while ago, I got on a kick, and I found a really good supply at a uh, military surplus store that was a little out of my way, but I, I got a really good line on these. These are about three, four years ago, maybe. And uh, they're CVC helmets. That's a combat vehicle crewman helmet, and it's what uh, what a, a tank crewman would wear. And um, it's all Kevlar. Um, here's one here. Now you're going to see that it has the the high cutouts here. Now that was because the, the inner liner <laughs> that were used with them had the headset to keep in contact, keep in communication with the rest of your uh, vehicle crewmen, whoever else you got in the tank with you or, or whatever kind of vehicle you're going to be in, Bradley or whatever. Um, so they came with a liner and they came with uh, a really good Bose um, that makes speakers. Bose, the company, um, actually had a contract with the U.S. to make the headsets. The, uh, that, that plug into the vehicle to talk to the rest of your crew. But the bad thing was the, the speakers, the bows were still good, but the liners were just skanky and, and, and just, I mean, these are surplus helmets, so I ditched all those. And I saw some pictures, and I was kind of inspired by the IBH and hadn't really seen this. I've seen this in a, a couple different, you know, it, it's one of those things. If it works for you, it works for you, and, and some people do it, some people don't. In you know real life or in airsoft whatever, um, I put a four point suspension on it, drilled some holes in there, put an ACH four point suspension on there with the with the neck nape on the back, really nice, really comfy. Um, I was a really big fan of these man. I bought up a bunch of them, 
just because I like them so much and because it's real Kevlar. And it's good to go. Again, Velcro, anywhere you want, anywhere that's going to work. Um, now it does bulge out on the sides a little bit, so it's not as slim line as what you get from like a Mitch 2002. Uh, you know, it's got the high cutouts or an IBH helmet, but you get the idea. Um, real cool, lightweight helmet because there's so much cut out from a typical like K-Pot. But um, really cool for the price. I bought, I bought a couple of them just for shits and giggles. And I tried out a, dip, a couple different suspension systems on And again, just with the Velcro, put it anywhere I wanted. Um, you know, hold your patches or reflective tape if I want to go jogging with a Kevlar helmet on at night. Sometimes I do that. Get weird. Um, really cool helmet. If you ever get a chance to come across CVC, Combat Vehicle Crewman Helmet, and usually you can find them on the cheap because they're not that popular, this is what they look like when you tear out that liner and give it all the speakers. And then again, it's, you know, it's communications friendly. I can stick freaking size 12 trunk speaker on my ear and be good to go on these things. And it's a uh, real Kevlar. So if you ever get a chance to pick one of these up, odds are it's going to be fairly cheap. Go ahead and jump on it and you will not regret it. One of the cooler helmets, the real Kevlar that I own.